are listening to the THC show, Two Hotheads on Cannabis, with your hosts, Not Afraid, I can, you will be. Welcome, welcome. Hello, hello. Two hot heads on cannabis. We sure are. <laughs> We're in here with a full studio of folks, too. We have a lovely show for you this week. We're interviewing Adam Scorgi from the Union. That's our big uh, interview today. But we also have our friend Shireen here. Shaleen. Shaleen. I'm sorry. Do we actually, did we say that right? Shaleen? Yes, yeah, Shaleen. Oh. Sh- Shaleen title. All right. Go okay, ahead. You can revoke my, my privilege. That's all right now. to it's be. <laughs> I'm usually the one that, that messes up the name. So come on. <laughs> That's true. It was my turn. Um, yeah, we have Shalene in here from Law Enforcement Against Prohibition and uh, folks from Suffolk Normal as well. And uh, of course, Mike Newman, our, our fearless leader, our, our producer, and uh, Michael Simpson, is, who's always, always getting the, uh, the guests ready and energized as we come in, telling, telling stories. <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have some time for it. His Some eyes are rolling. Stories. His eyes are rolling right I know. Now. <laughs> He's shaking his head. I just, I don't hear the whole thing, so I can't understand the full... Tell, tell me about it, Mr. Mr. Simpson. I'm sorry. Yeah. We were talking about a drug TV show with crooked people that work in law enforcement and on the city council. And it was based in Chicago. It's a TV show. Oh, Chicago. Oh, okay. I Kirk thought this was real life. Simpson. I was like, <laughs> I was like, all right, let's scare the scare the uh, guests. No, it's, <laughs> it's a series. It's good. It's oh, okay. Kelsey Grammer's on it. Okay, take it back. <laughs> <laughs> Simpson, how how are you doing with Dan Ray? Uh, I don't like him. <laughs> I was on Have you called day. into a show lately since yeah, that video? Yeah, I, I was on it two days ago. He keeps talking about Mr. Friendly. I told him, quit talking about Mr. Friendly. Let him, leave him alone because he's mad because he apologized. How do you know who you're talking Who's Mr. Yeah, Friendly? Right. The president. Oh, Mr. The president. Okay. Yeah, he likes everybody. That's, the yeah. pres- that's Mr. Friendly. Okay. Yeah. I, are you friends back in Chicago? <laughs> uh, his wife went to the same elementary that's school right. I went to, but um, so we have a I'm personal not friends connection. with him. He don't, he don't play real Chicago politics. He plays Mr. Friendly politics. That's why his ass stay in trouble. <laughs> he come from a pot infested neighborhood and he don't want to do anything about the pot I don't know I'm holding out hope second term you know he just shows up one day and he's like yeah you know this whole prohibition thing was silly anyway you know I was just doing it to get through to part two so yeah. you know screw it <laughs> marijuana's legal now well, let him what do you think the chances the are I'll take, a, I'll take a yeah collective straw poll in the, uh, in the room right now what do you think the chances are that Obama might just make some uh, radical decisions. No second chance. Ter- None. No. Zero. No zero. I'm getting a round yeah, of. Yeah, I think uh, it's zero. No. Of thumbs down. Agreeing with we, no we got to. Con- yeah. Speaking, <laughs> <laughs> speaking of straw polls. Pipe dreams. <laughs> we we have to continue our uh, talking about our straw poll that we're mm-hmm. doing for presidential candidates. Yes. With uh, Gary Johnson in last week. We sure did. Thank uh, you, Gary, for being on the show. That was a wonderful interview. I have to feel that he is now the front runner <laughs> in, in this uh, Two Hot Heads straw poll. But Vermin Supreme is so dreamy. <laughs> he's in sec- I, 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 I think he's in second place because he reposts, <laughs> he reposts our stuff to his uh, Twitter. He hasn't come on the show yet, but he's shown some uh, Really? Oh, I, didn't even, I didn't know about this. He's oh, yeah. retweeting us? Yeah, he's retweeting us. That always us. sounds so dirty when I say it. <laughs> Retweeting. Yes. I don't know. Um, <laughs> so we're to, we're gonna have him on the show. Yeah, and lots of have to. lots of news this we're week gonna drag too. Him. We're gonna get into the news again. Yes. If people have uh, something that they want to pass along to us, six one seven six zero six four one two two. Comment on the show. Uh, you know the Facebook group, I think by now. Facebook dot com yeah. groups. Facebook group ads. continues to grow too. Every every week, every time I look at it, you know, there's new posts and most of our news stories are coming from that. From that Facebook page, so it's it's very current, it's up to date, and people are uh, are weighing in, which is great. We had a, we had some big debates also this week on the Facebook page that we'll get into later. Did Should we, be interesting. We had some debates. We on We did. There? I saw one that was like thirty four. Uh, which one was that? All right, I'm gonna pull it up. We'll discuss it. All right, later. we'll discuss it in a bit. <laughs> well, when we come back, we're gonna be with Shaleen Title. We sure are. From uh, students <laughs> uh, from Law Enforcement Against Prohibition, she books the speakers. Uh, that long speaker list that we had talked about the last few weeks that uh, law enforcement against prohibition has, she books them um, for speaking engagements across the country and the world. So she's someone you can contact if you ever want to have someone come out from law enforcement against prohibition to speak. 
what we're talking to her about today is her big event that she's doing tonight. It's the SSDP Diversity Fundraiser, Students for Sensible Drug Policy. It's a big fundraiser. Some of it's already been sold out on Facebook. It uh, was noted that uh, the special dance performance was sold out which starts what at What kind of a special dance? This we're sounds talk, we're, we're, we're gonna, that's Actually, we're going we're gonna to wait. We're going to find out about that <laughs> after the break. What do, what, what do we have for music, Newman? Uh, we have something that's just awesome. It's an 80s band. Actually, maybe an early 90s that's band called Cracker. It's called Cracker. <laughs> and well, this is uh, Let's Go For A Ride. We'll be right back. And we'll be back. On RegularRadio.com Two hotheads on cannabis. With Mike Can and Heather Mack on unregularradio.com. You're listening to Two Hotheads on Cannabis. You know the phone number, I think, by now. 617-606-4122 if you don't. And uh, instant feedback is if at unregularradio.com. And, and we uh, love hearing from you guys. Please, please. All the, all the controversial statements you can throw at us, we, we will appreciate. All the abuse and hatred. The abu- no, we, we're getting so much love is well, what's there, really there's happening. Been some, there's been some angry response. You always hear about the angry stuff. Oh, yeah. I think I have a selective uh, you know, way of reading, <laughs> reading these things. <laughs> I don't think you look as deeply as I do. The responses. <laughs> You know what? Was that a, was that a comment on my uh, intellectual approach to this show? No. No. Oh, my God. You're an ace. Are you kidding me? No. No. All right. Keep no, talking. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. It was more like uh, uh, some of the comments on, on uh, some of our recent shows has been uh, a lot of people love it, you know, the change. And, and then some of the stuff we've gotten into I think it's because people are paying attention now. If they don't like something, they let us know. It's just funny. Yeah. They're so, not afraid. They're not afraid. And that's good. That's that's what we want. We want to hear from people. Um, in the studio right now, we've got a bunch of people, but the, the person that we're going to be is... Uh, my headphones are echoing. Can you hear that? Or is that just me? No, just you. Just me. Okay. Um, in the studio, we have Shalene Title. Uh, she is from Law Enforcement Against Prohibition, which uh, we can definitely talk about more of. Um, but what we really ha- want to focus on is, is her birthday today. Is it today or was it yesterday? It was yesterday. Yesterday, okay. Yesterday well, it's your was, birth, like, week, yeah. month. You get yeah. to stretch that out for as long as you want. Yeah. This That's is, how it works. And this, <laughs> <laughs> it's a, so a birthday weekend, and we, we definitely have to sing happy birthday to her eventually sometime in the show, right? Okay. Certainly. Yeah, and uh, she's doing a birthday party tonight, which I think is a great. This is a phenomenal cause. We've had we featured them on our show. Students for Sensible Drug Policy, all the good work that they're doing, uh, specifically up with the candidates in New Hampshire for president. We watched them; they were very effective. Uh, she's sponsoring, you know, basically raising money to sponsor uh, Students for Sensible Drug Policy. These are specific students. This doesn't go to some big organization. It goes to the students themselves so that they can travel and go to the big conference. Is that correct? Shalene? Yeah, our annual training conference, which is taking place in Denver, March 24th and 25th. Excellent. And what, what happens at this uh, training conference? Like, what, I know why it's such a great thing for a student to participate in, but uh, I want to make sure that other people understand. Do you... I think these conferences are the best thing that SSDP does because we do specific training for people, um, media, lobbying, fundraising, everything that you can learn specific skills to do and then take home and make change in your communities. And that is what our students end up doing. It's also really great to network with other students and learn about what's going on in their chapters and meet mentors as well. Excellent. And, um, I want to go. Yeah, you want to go? You want to go to the SSDP? What about, what about the other students that we have in the room? Are you guys going to be, have you gone to this before? Can you testify? Um, or you know folks who have? Well, SSDP is definitely a different organization than normal. That is and true. And we're, <laughs> we're the student normal chapter. And I will admit that, uh, you know, normal doesn't actually have the the greatest outreach for the students versus SSDP. I think SSDP is, is the perfect college like drug reform organization it's so awesome and then like normal normal is a good thing to kind of have like a startup in, the, in college mm-hmm. and kind of get the uh, the idea of like advocating for marijuana reform but but SSDP the things that you guys are doing is absolutely unbelievable and raise money for that is it's just it's just awesome and that's well, Jeff Jeff like- Morris speaking he's uh, the gentleman who started Suffolk University normal 
Awesome. Yeah, I was going to say, though, it seems like it's it's something that should be open, you know, that is open to all folks who want to get involved, right? Whether oh, yeah, I'm not a student, and I'm going. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. I want to go. It sounds. I've actually always wanted to go, and I think I remember once applying for a scholarship and getting accepted to it and then not being able to end up going so that was like that was such a bummer so i i hope that all students regardless of what affiliation they have take the opportunity to go down there sounds awesome and what about what about tonight's fundraiser too i know uh this is a bit it looks like a big event already people have already rsvp'd you have a special performance that's it's sold out that Heather wanted to hear about. Tell us about that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so the whole purpose of this party was to thank people for being so generous because we just started this specific fund this year. And there's just a big outpouring of support from people. And it's all small donations, you know, like $20 to $100. And we were able to reach our goal of $1,000 yesterday, which is the best yeah. birthday. Yeah, that's ever. awesome. <laughs> that's fabulous. Yeah. And so um, for the party, you know, we just wanted to let people have a good time. And so we have like some little different performances going on. And um, my dance teacher, I do Indian classical dance called Bharatanatyam. She's a really good, really high rated teacher. Her name is Deepa Srinath. And she's going to be doing an original choreography tonight for the party. Wow, that sounds incredible. Yeah. That sounds fabulous. And uh, there's a lot more going on after that too, right? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a little bit crazy. It's a small party, um, and so we took... <laughs> Those we, sound like contradictory statements right there. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> well, we um, like we started out deciding to do a raffle, and uh, Vapor Brothers was really generous. Nice. We, we love Vapor, Vapor Brothers. Brothers. Yeah, Vapor yes, Brothers. they are so supportive. Mm-hmm. So they donated. And then, uh, you know, when you work in drug policy, you guys know people are always giving you DVDs and posters and things like that. So Apparently. we started putting those together i think i need to get on that list <laughs> you can send me some some crap guys <laughs> <laughs> we did have vapor Ri- brothers obviously donated they donated some vaporizers to our show as well that we got to give away that was a huge deal that was awesome so it's always yeah. great yeah. so good so good on that at this event tonight and win a uh vapor brothers vaporizer if you didn't win it on the show you can go down tonight how do um uh, people will find out the directions by it says texting you can i read the phone number is that right yeah please do all right um if you want to go to this event tonight it is in medford mass it starts at uh, 9 p.m for the uh drinks dancing dance central contest oh right. dance it's central i game. love dance central i i work with kids and we play that all the time it is the best game ever <laughs> you like use the xbox connect and it recognizes your body movements and stuff see i'm yeah. missing this oh I, no I don't even it's know awesome what you're talking it's awesome. about me like, either I'm, I'm, oh i'm so there i'm old <laughs> <laughs> like you know how the wii works with the controller yeah. and you dance yeah. so there's no controller it it's teaches just, you a routine and it just watches you and tells you how you're doing at the routine that's interesting it's <laughs> awesome it's the best i'll have to yeah I, i'm i can't dance that's but I, I maybe i can do that that we'll try well i think that's great too because a lot of times like people get lost in just the political aspect of like you know going to meetings and like rallying and this and that but it's fun to you know you have to sort of as an organization come together come back and regroup and have fun you know enjoy ourselves that's why we have our rallies that's why we have our you know our stu- our events and stuff and parties <laughs> yeah. exactly no. the point of this party right so on yep. have yep. a nice balance there and so if you want to go, you can text Shalene at 617-955-9638 uh, for location and directions. You can uh, buy the tickets online on our Facebook page. It's SSDP Diversity Fundraiser. Yeah, and I'm going to link it on our, uh, on our Facebook page so you guys can check it out on there as well. And uh, tell, yeah, we're, we're actually going to play some clips from um, some things that are going on with President Obama. We've been talking about him a little bit today. Um, Mr. Law, Friendly, that's yeah. what Mike, Mike, Mike Simpson calls him. Law enforcement <laughs> against prohibition, you work quite a bit with. You're on the, I'd say, inside with them. Am I correct on saying that? Yeah, we're a very small staff, six staff members. I'm their speakers bureau director, so I recruit, train, and then uh, manage their activities. How, how would you say with the Obama administration, we brought it up, the Justice Department, um, how do they react to LEAP in law enforcement? Because you guys are asking them the questions and... The YouTube, that was the number one voted question was law enforcement against prohibition asking Obama about marijuana again, the drug war, again and again. How do they react? Like, are they, 
do they receive you guys? Do they talk to the to the leaders? Does Jack Cole get his phone call answered? Well, uh, to be honest, I think that they're a little bit scared of us because they aren't able to dismiss us. Um, I think that they know that a lot of people that come up and challenge them are experts on the subject, but they still feel comfortable dismissing them as not serious or not knowing the issue. But uh, when LEAP members come up who have had the exact same position, um, then they take it seriously. One example was last June, we had written a report on how the Obama administration was not living up to its promises about treating drugs as a health issue. And so um, we went to deliver the report to the drug czar, Gil Kilikowski, and we had Norm Stamper with us, who was the chief of police of Seattle, directly before yeah. him. And the two of them are peers, yeah, they, know they each should other. be friends. Yeah. And they know each other, um, but he wouldn't even come downstairs to receive the report. That's what I, you know, that's what surprises me because I, I realize that history there. It's like you have the drug czars from Seattle. Seattle is the place where you have the Hempfest. Seattle is the city where we have, as you said, Norm Stamper. I mean, uh, the Seattle mayor just came out this week and supported the marijuana legalization initiative. That doesn't happen in Boston, you know. It's it's very interesting. Um, wow. Um, we are Newman. Do you have that clip that we were talking about? I do. All right. Well, you know, basically, what we're going to do right now, um, we're going to come back with Shalene, and we're going to bring uh, these. We're going to talk to the guys from Suffolk University, Normal too. Later on, we're going to talk to Adam Scorgi from the Union. But right now, we're going to play a clip, and this is uh, Rep. Anne Marie Burkle. She's a Congresswoman from New York, and she's questioning the Obama head of the Justice Department and the Attorney General, Eric Holder. Uh, Eric Holder, you know, this Justice Department is cracking down in the medical marijuana industry. It's, it's so obvious we are seeing it everywhere. At the same time, they're in a huge scandal where this Justice Department, the ATF, they knew about this. They sent guns to Mexican drug lords. And these guns have killed Americans. They killed uh, an ATF agent, uh, a Border Patrol agent named Brian Terry and uh, maybe some other Americans too, and a lot of innocent people in Mexico. And uh, they're not, you know, as usual, this, this administration is not dealing with these issues. They're ignoring it. They're talking about politics. It's not about politics. This guy is dead and other people are dying. This is, you know, we can't have medical cannabis that is non-toxic, but you can send guns that kill people. Let's play the clip. Mr. We'll, Chairman, we'll come back and, and talk you, about uh, it. Mr. Holder for being here this morning. I, I just want to make a couple of comments to start out because we've heard it from the other side of the aisle and even yourself uh, with regards to this being a Democratic or Republican issue, whether this is a uh, you know, political game, if this is an election year charade. Um, I think it's very important to recognize that you as the Attorney General, with all due respect, need to be held accountable or someone does, as to what happened. Now, I'm, I'm amazed that of all the issues that face this country, this is the issue that I hear from my district so frequently about. That, and, and in fact, today, and I will uh, enter them into the record, I have no fewer than 30 questions from folks in my district who want to know what happened, why it happened, and who's going to be held accountable to it. And I, I was taken aback just a little bit with your response to my colleague, Mr. Wahlberg, when you sort of um, declared that I am the Attorney General. Well, with all due respect, sir, yes, you are, but you're also accountable to not only the folks in my district, but the American people. And I just want to, um, if you would indulge me, um, just play a recording, because most importantly, and as you're well aware of, we had a hearing here in June uh, with uh, uh, Brian Terry's family. And in that hearing, I specifically asked his mother, and we'll play that hearing if, if uh, you would please. A, a question that uh, you would like us to, to ask. I think uh, we'd want to know if the dragnet that is set to find everyone involved in Brian's murder will be set deep enough and wide enough to encompass anyone involved in Operation Fast and Furious. If the guns used in Brian's murder were part of this operation, 
then we'd want to know will everyone in that operation that had to deal with those we specific weapons be brought up on charges of facilitating the murder of Brian Terry? Thank you. We will ask that question on your behalf. And so, Mr. Attorney General, on behalf of Mr. Heyer, who was uh, Brian Terry's cousin and actually the spokesperson for his mother and his sister, I would ask you, um, to what lengths has your investigation into Operation Fast and Furious gone? And will everyone in that operation that had to deal with those specific weapons be brought up on charges facilitating the murder of Brian Terry? Well, there, we are certainly working now to, I mean, this, this is an ongoing investigation. It's actually at a, at a very sensitive time, and I'm not sure I can talk about it an awful lot about where the investigation is. Uh, I've indicated that I think we're pretty close to um, making some announcements, um, and we will hold uh, accountable, seek to hold accountable uh, those people who are responsible for Agent Terry's death. Um, with regard to people who uh, were involved in uh, Operation Fast and Furious, we are endeavoring to find out who um, made the determinations to allow guns to walk. Um, I, I'm not at, really at liberty to talk about the weapons that were used in the, uh, in the actual incident that goes to uh, ballistics reports that I don't think I, should, I, I, can, I can comment on here. That will obviously come out during the course of the trial. Um, but we will hold accountable um, people who were um, involved in, as I've described, this flawed investigation. And one other thing, uh, I, I did not mean to imply in the comments that I made there that I should not be held uh, accountable. But I also think that there's a certain fairness component to this as well. And I ought to be held accountable for those things that are within my area of responsibility. Uh, I should be held accountable for things that are factually correct as opposed to uh, those things that are politically desired. And uh, I'm more than willing to admit mistakes when I have made them. Um, but I also think that uh, if we're going to really get ahead here, if we're going to really make some progress, um, we need to put aside the political gotcha games in an election year um, and focus on matters that are extremely serious. When one looks at the death toll in Mexico, when we look at the Excuse number me, of guns sir, that my, my time Mexico, is ticking away. I just have one more question. Um, as unlike the chairman, I was one of the members of Congress who called for your resignation. Um, I feel that the Department of Justice um, that you're responsible for all, for all of the activities that fall under your umbrella. And I think that uh, you, you've, you've denied knowledge of the program and that accordingly you should not be held accountable. My question to you today is what more could have possibly gone wrong that you would have been held accountable? And, and before you answer that, I would suggest that the President has been eerily quiet about coming to your defense. So, so let me ask it this way. How many more Border Patrol agents would have had to die as a part of Operation Fast and Furious for you to take responsibility? The gentlelady's time has expired. The gentleman may answer. Or not. You know, I, <laughs> you know, that's the kind of thing, you know, you wonder why you're getting those calls. I mean, you know, people will focus on a question as much as an answer. And, you know, as a member of Congress, you know, I mean, really, I mean, it, it, is that the way in which um, you want to be seen, you want to be known? Uh, you know, I should be held accountable for sure, certainly my role uh, in whatever I did or didn't do in connection with the supervision of Fast and Furious. But, yeah, I'm Attorney General of the United States, and I should also be held accountable and perhaps even given some credit. Imagine that, given some credit for the things that this Justice Department has done under my leadership, whether it, it deals with national security, revitalized antitrust, a revitalized civil rights enforcement effort. Um, and so one has to balance all of these things. I'm not claiming to be a perfect person or a perfect attorney general. I get up every day and try to do the best job that I can. I have great faith in the people who work in the department. And, you know, that kind of question um, I, I think is, is frankly, and again, respect, I, I think that's beneath a member of Congress. Well, the, the gentleman has concluded, I think. We Two hotheads on cannabis with Mike Can and Heather Mack on unregularradio.com.
That was A.G. Holder. Speaking about uh, Obama, and uh, I mean, speaking about Fast and Furious, and their administration refuses to answer any questions on it. They're uh, basically stonewalling. You can clearly see it. Um, w- does anyone else have any thoughts about it? Heather? No? I mean... <laughs> you, you support this guy, right? This this administration. I I didn't say that. Uh, right, well, <laughs> you're you're putting some significant words in. Well, my I thought you were voting that way. Um, w- I mean that that's one thing. It doesn't mean I, I support everything this administration is doing, especially when it comes down to, uh, you know, their views on drug law reform. And I certainly think this is uh, above and beyond what what <laughs> they should uh, be be involved with. Um, certainly, and it does seem like uh, you, you know, Gen- Attorney General Holder was being pretty significantly evasive and most of what I heard was him saying I'm not at liberty to say which just sounds very familiar very familiar echo from uh, you know Donald Rumsfeld and others uh, it you does know, it does remind you yeah, of that doesn't right? it? <laughs> it it reminds me of what Simpson said he's, he's trying to deal with his headphones we have headphone issues but Simpson you said it on WBZ it reminds me of Iran Contra that's what it reminds me of does it remind you of Iran Contra Simpson a little bit it is yeah. it's the same game yeah yeah, that's that's what I was trying to explain before. Um, once you're in power, you shift weight to who's ever uh, uh, can take the blame, and uh, you know you cover your ass, and that's all they do. They like covering their ass, and like I say, you know the president, he 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 flip flops on the issue, and uh, he plays these little silly game. Now they have some fire from something that uh, occurred in Mexico, and. They they really don't have nobody to blame right now, but they will find a culprit. Yeah, they'll look for someone to hang. Yeah, some innocent guy. It's all their Ball fault. Guy. It's not the president's fault. It's not the attorney general's fault. It's somebody else's fault. <laughs> somebody else screwed up. It's a far cry from early on in the uh, administration too, which I, I wonder. I just wonder what what created that pivot, that <laughs> idea politically that you know instead of going with the the sensibles, you know, stay out of stay out of uh, you know the business of you know, prosecuting people, putting them in jail, and uh, going after, you know, dispensaries, of course, and all these other organizations that are being targeted now on a huge, you know, huge scale. What what happened? Wasn't Attorney General Holder the first, you know, this the, the person who wrote that memo that said that that was going to be the least priority of, um, you know, deprioritized in the, in the federal agenda? So um, I just wonder what, what, what made the shift, the ideological shift, uh, closer to election time when it seems so clear that people are against this. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just I think once you get in office, that's the way to the office. Anyone else in the, in the uh, studio have thoughts on that, why, you know, why this shift has been going on? I'm with you. I'm just really genuinely curious. I mean... I'm not intimately familiar with the details of Fast and Furious, but just from the gist of it and from the medical marijuana crackdowns, these techniques that anybody who did 10 minutes of research would know isn't going to help any of the problems. I'm just so curious as to what the incentive is there. Are you trying to impress voters? Are you trying to impress donors? I just am so curious. Well, that that's the thing. It's unexplainable unless you go to conspiracy theory. And that, that, no. that's, that's how con- uncomfortable. It's like Iran Contra. I mean, you can't explain this stuff away, and and it goes back to the central tenant that does you know how uh, the, uh, the, the Iran Contra and uh, Dark Alliance and Gary Webb that work where they said the CIA was dealing drugs in L.A. I mean that that's where it is. This is a territory. Not only were they dealing drugs, but they were sending guns to the criminals, the U.S. government. Well, our funding, they're you know they're they're funding these cartels uh, what's the name of the cartel the Zetas they gave them a 2,000 guns you got to remember um, t- what insane. might be criminals to us right will be allies to the government that they use at that particular time for whatever particular allies reason they of use convenience. It. that's it right and then when it uh, blows up in their face then they're either criminals or they're terrorists it's but, just like uh, but they, in Afghanistan yeah they, it's they, like they, they fought the Russians yeah. And then when they were fighting the Russians, they wanted these people to grow poppy so they could fund that war. Yeah. 
Well, they, they grow plenty of it, and they can't stop it from growing. I learned a long time ago, over 30 years ago, that heroin was the, and Afghanistan was the biggest producing crop in the world because it costs uh, so little to make it, and, and uh, people that was bringing it over, they was making $200 million out of each stash they brought over, and the government knew about Sound it. Sound familiar? Stop it. <laughs> yeah. You know, so it's <laughs> something that they do. It's, it's like the corporate that be. Whoever got the most power and the most money can rattle the biggest sword in the government, and they can say, well, we want to do this, and uh, we're going to back you, and if something happens, we're going to use a fall guy. Well, fall right now, guy, they, yeah. yeah, they don't have a fall guy Yeah, right they're, now, they're looking, they're looking for one. They're yeah. looking for one. They're looking for some document fall yeah. guys, too, because they don't have enough documents to back up whatever story they're going to come up with, apparently. <laughs> Oh, yep. they got the hands full. Yeah. I mean, it's just the hypocrisy. And, and I think that's, uh, you know, Adam Scorgi also does an excellent job of uh, of exposing that type of, uh, you know, uh, consistent hypocrisy within our own federal federal government and state governments when it comes to uh, marijuana legalization and uh, marijuana drug law policy in general. And we'll talk a little bit, we'll talk a lot more about that later on in the show when we have him on the show. Yeah. But, um, and we're taking phone calls, 617-606-4122. Instant feedback. I have reason to believe our instant feedback isn't working today for some reason. We so haven't try calling in. May, yep. Maybe maybe they maybe you're fibbing and you haven't sent it. So send it if at unregularradio.com. And uh, we what we have some special music that you wanted to hear. Don't we, Heather? Oh uh, yeah. Well. Newman is going to play. Oh, um, it's not something you wanted. It's something Newman wanted. Well, no, it's it's a collective thing. This what, is this, we we work together. Oh, all of we us collaborate this. here. All of okay, us. On the no, show. actually, this is all of our music. Yeah, exactly. This these are our folks, our friends from uh, Nicole D'Amico and friends who came on the show last week that were so excellent, and that um, I'm really hoping will continue to be featured on our show. And we're going to do a you know play we'll one of that. their. And then, oh, and then when we come back, we have to sing Happy Birthday to somebody. Oh yeah, that's true. And I, I, I issue a challenge. If you, I, I started doing this at my friends' birthday parties, asking them if they wanted another song because we sing Happy Birthday all the damn time. It's a little bit tired. <laughs> also, isn't it copywritten? Are we not allowed to sing? We can, we can do it. We, we can do whatever we, the fuck we, we want we, on this we, show. I guess. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, no. We, we, we <laughs> not pay. that I'm worried about it. We I'm pay just the like, fees. if We're, you have another mm-hmm. song you want us to serenade, like you know, an old Motown classic. We, yeah, we can sing whenever because we, we, like, we are professional. We pay we sure? the copywriters to oh. sing the song. On the show. Uh, is we're that like, how this works? Oh yeah, we're, we're funded or whatever. That, that we, that's a good idea. You can do whatever you like on this show. But oh, guess yeah. what? You can do the hell whatever you like on my show. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Seth said that would be twenty five bucks Ulterior to promote your motive, show on the two over here. cannabis. <laughs> <laughs> You're just a sidekick here. You don't get that free. Uh, Whoa! What you just do? <laughs> right. No. Oh, that's when, when is your? You know, we'll. we'll we want to know when your show is, but March 15th. March 15th. March 15th. Right. 1030 to 11. Why don't we talk about it more? We'll get really into what you're going to be doing at the end of the show today. You yeah, how's that? You want to do that? Yeah. All right. So if you want to hear more about Simpsons show, what mm. he's doing, hang out for a while. Yeah, if you dare. If you dare. <laughs> and ha- we're going to sing happy birthday to Shaleen, and uh, we're going to hear the- Nicole, right? Yep. This yeah, is this Nicole. is Crossroads. Uh-huh. On regularradio.com. You're listening to Two Hotheads on Cannabis with your hosts, Mike Can and Heather Mack on unregularradio.com. That was Tree, Question Abuse, from, uh, live from the Palladium in, sometime in the 1990s. That was amazing. Dave Tree. He's hosting a big event tonight. It's actually uh, a benefit for, I believe, Dave Tree himself. It's uh, his, his old band, Drug War. And uh, he has an art studio that is about to be demolished. The building's going to be demolished, so he's got to raise some money to, to open a new studio. Right, and he does screen printing, right, and all sorts of other really cool art. Awesome art. The uh, shirt I'm wearing right now, actually, the T-shirt, Dave Tree designed it. He does a lot of T-shirts for a lot of people. Uh, the Brattle Theater does all their T-shirts, the Doctor Who T-shirts you'll see around town. You can buy Dave Tree stuff at like uh, Stingray Body Art and a lot of the local shops. Yeah, and we have another event that we have to promote, of course. We have Shaleen Title in here, um, who's going to have to go and get ready for said event. But she um, is is hosting a party tonight uh, for SSDP, for their regional conference, and the celebration of all the of all the uh, money that they've raised. And um, we, we got some traditional Indian dance. We got food. We got music starting at 9 o'clock in Medford. Um, we have a link to the event on our 
Facebook page, and it is also it happened to be her birthday yesterday. So we're gonna have to sing Happy Birthday. Pre- yeah, to especially for making so. <laughs> this, for making her birthday a Students for Sensible Drug Policy right. fundraiser for these students directly to the students. Yep, these go to this money raised is going to scholarships to get kids to this uh, to this conference, which so is good for show. our movement and as well as good for them. You know, it's good for and them. Kids who would normally not be able to pay or not you know yeah. not be able to access that. So being an SSDP, I think, is a good thing for uh, students. In terms of, you know, further in their education and, and finding jobs and networking and really uh, realizing that drug policy is not something to run away from. Right. Any sort of student drug law reform organization is going to do that similar. Also, we got normal in the building, of, of yeah, course. Yeah, we don't want to shut them off. As well, off. absolutely not. Yeah, yeah. All right. We'll so into, normal we'll, is going to also assist. S.U. Normal. This, uh, you uh, Serenade. Sean, <laughs> and are, you, are you guys going to uh, join us? And, and singing with, happy with the birthday? singing? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah I think oh, yeah. you have to. I think it's... We'll do it. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's, don't forget, it's an obligation. And don't forget, 4, 420 <laughs> is upon us also. Well, Do you guys think you can do like a little barber shot, like we're gonna have to wait for in the background? <laughs> doom, doom, doom. Yeah, that's what I'm doom. looking for. Okay. All right. well, there we go. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. To you. Happy birthday, birthday to you. It's your birthday. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, dear Shalini. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Ooh. Yeah! Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> that was like R&B slow jam style. That was like voice to men. That was sexy. <laughs> if I knew you could do that, I would have made you sing at my party. Oh! <laughs> Oh, shit. Well, always next available year. for bookings. So. Yeah. yeah. And now this, is how, this is how we book Heather. Uh, solo <laughs> sex. And I'm always promoting. Yeah, yeah. my solo band, Solo sex. sex. Solo can. sex. And yeah. now let's enjoy our 420. <laughs> we interrupt our program to bring you a special broadcast. Bing bong. It's 420. <laughs> is sure to ensue. <laughs> Live on Two Hotheads on Cannabis, and uh, it is that magic moment in the show where uh, pe- we take a little break and regroup, and we're going to come... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm about to regroup all over this this beautiful piece. <laughs> what about Brought our rule? Are we going to stick to our rule today? Stop. <laughs> We Mom. Get, I don't know if you can notice on our show, but we instigated a new. Instant yeah, I want. I want some instant feedback on this. I want a straw poll from yeah. our audience. I mean, should, should we hold off to five o'clock, or should we go at four twenty? Four twenty. Come on, that's a good time to start. It's just a little like I'm, lubrication. I'm the gatekeeper. I'm I'm sticking to five for myself, anyways. But uh, uh, we're gonna come back. We're gonna uh, play a little music, and then we're gonna play a quick trailer from the Union. Uh, the movie is called The Union, The Business Be- Behind Getting High. Let me say that again. The Union, The Business Behind Getting High. And it's after- wildly successful, too. It's a huge movie. Yeah, huge Played documentary. Played all over college campuses, all over the world. Um, it's a really excellent resource and a historical and economic resource. And, re- uh, you know, talking about the uh logic or illogic there <laughs> there in of uh marijuana prohibition with Tommy in this Chong, Mark Emery, Joe Rogan, all he's got sorts all sorts of yep. folks. And and so we'll be playing that trailer and we'll, after that when we come back, we will be on the phone with Adam Scorgi, the director producer of that movie and talking about his new movie The Culture High and some of the other movies that he is currently working on. So keep listening and uh yeah, send us your instant feedback, if at unregularradio.com, 
And uh, Nikki said she's sending us instant feedback. We're not getting them. Maybe we're There's not getting them. There's tech problems. All right. There are tech problems. So, so call, call us instead. Yeah, call in. Forget we, the instant feedback. 617-606-4122. Please, please call us. If you're in. sending us instant feedback, we're not getting them. So you have to call this You week. can also post on our uh, Facebook page. I know during the uh, course of the show, we've had a few people request to be a part of the group. So that's great. Uh, two Hot Heads on Cannabis. Facebook.com slash group slash Two Hot Heads. So find us on there and you can send us your feedback as well. And uh, what do we got for music clip? coming up? We got Sublime, Legalize It, then the Union trailer, and then we'll be back with Adam. Excellent. On regularradio.com. Marijuana could well turn out to be the most dangerous drug that is in use in our country today. The campaign will continue uh, until every uh, available known uh, plot of marijuana has been eradicated. Acceptance of drug use is simply not an option for this administration. I assume the goals of prohibition are to reduce the amount of drugs available and to reduce the demand for those drugs. I thought pot made you stupid. You know, I bought into it just as much as anybody did. A lot of the information that was kept and warehoused in the Library of Congress was actually recalled and destroyed. There are no deaths from cannabis use. You can't find one. Marijuana is just a weed, and marijuana is worth more ounce for ounce than gold. This brings crime into it. The ability to make money is so huge in it. We have seen an explosion in prison construction. We have private prisons? What the f*** is that? How can you profit over people going to jail? There are millions of drug tests per year. It's not just urine anymore, it's, uh, it's hair and saliva. They'll do blood testing. There's industry there, this is money. They're not doing it for free. The most profitable industry in the United States is pharmaceutical. Pharmaceutical companies don't want you growing your own medicine. We finally got a grower. I mean, I imagine they're probably laid this way. You want to know what a weed smoker looks like? You're staring at one. He said, well, it's not really a drug bust. I said, well, then what the are you doing in my house? It causes people to think. When people think, they question. They question things like, say, the war in Vietnam or the Gulf War or oil war. You know, the use of the criminal law for the basis of public health is a wholly bad idea, no matter how you cut it. The fiber itself is the strongest natural fiber in the world. And we're worried about things going extinct, and yet the policy on the most useful plants in the world is that they should all be eliminated and driven to extinction. Sometimes you, you feel like you've stepped into Alice in, in Wonderland. You've gone through the looking glass. You're listening to Two Hotheads on Cannabis with your hosts, Mike Can and Heather Mack on unregularradio.com. You're listening live to Two Hotheads on Cannabis on unregularradio.com. Always on unregularradio.com. We love this station. Don't we, Heather? We absolutely do. And we just heard the trailer for The Union, the business behind Getting High. And on the phone, we actually have the executive producer of the union. And host. On this. Yeah, and yeah, and host. He's in the movie, uh, which features also Tommy Chong, Mark Emery, Joe Rogan, uh, Lester Grinspoon, who you heard. Uh, it, it, it covers the entire gamut of the drug war, and especially the war in marijuana, both uh, for people who are growing, the grow rooms, uh, as well as the drug warriors and the prison side of it. It really does cover everything. And on the phone, we have Adam Scorgi. Hello, Adam. Are you there? I'm here. Thanks for having me on. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I myself have, have seen the union, um, and we have uh, had it on the... We've, we've hosted um, union showing screenings at um, various colleges. At my college, at University of Massachusetts Amherst, and I believe we have some folks here from Suffolk University who also hosted and, uh, and uh, screened that show. And, um, yes, my my boy out there hosted a really good screening with Lester. He had me and Lester come out there. 
Yeah, we were here. They're in the studio. You want to say hi? We have Jeff. <laughs> Jeff. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Let me say hi. Hey, hey Jeff. What's going on, Adam? Hey, what's going on, man? Uh, good, to, good to talk to you, man. I haven't talked to you in a long time. Yeah, it's been a while. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be needing your help here soon from all you guys when, we, uh, when we're doing our big push for a big theatrical run on our follow-up film, The Culture High. So, oh, yes. Uh, Very your, your screening is still one of the best to date. So, oh, well, I mean, thank you. professionalism once again. Thank you, thank you. So Suffolk Normal, uh, how many people would you say for that screening that you guys did? For the uh, we probably we have a uh, we kind of have like a really really nice theater that was built about five years ago that we filled the entire um, the entire floor, um, which was which was what probably like sixty students in that thing packed in there. Yeah, I would say about yeah, sixty students. No, I, I think throughout the whole night you guys had about a hundred. Yeah, because we, we had people yeah, coming had in. Some people straggling late and yeah. come at the end. It was a good it was a good showing for capacity. Sure. That's fantastic, and we know it's it's a hugely popular film, um, widely cited. Um, all over the country, all over the world. And, um, you know, it's so straightforward and so simple um, in the way it sort of dissects the whole drug war and the arc of the drug war in this country. Um, and, you know, it's, it's clear to see why it's so popular, but why, why do you think that the movie has been so successful at reaching out to people? I, I think the key was is that because me and the director went into this totally blind, we had no political agendas coming into the film, so we just took an honest perspective, and as guys, like as real journalists should be, and then when we came, you know, during the process of interviewing us, we found out, like, there's no deaths, and, like, how is hemp so illegal, and it baffled us, right, just looking at it, really looking at it for the first time, and then we were just like, man, like, we thought we were pretty intelligent guys, but you felt really stupid that how could something like this, that especially with access to information nowadays, is right there, and you've totally been taken for a loop. And we just said, well, let's just portray what we learned during the process of this film and just portray it in an educational way. And I know when it first came out, there were some like big activists that kind of criticized it because they're like, well, we already knew everything on there. And it was like, yeah, yeah but you're someone that's been researching and yeah. fighting that argument for a long time. To so the average, you know, North America and Canada included, they don't take the time to do any research. So yeah. you have to present it to them in a logical and a rational way, but also entertaining, because at the end of the day, it is a movie. Yeah, and I think that's the key to our success. Right. We simply went into it to do an expose of the BC industry and learned that it's way more worldly connected than what's just going on in this province, and the film grew into something much bigger. And I think that's why it's had this crazy underground cult following. Well, that's interesting because, uh, you know, that's, it's interesting that you say that you didn't have a uh, preordained uh, idea about uh, or an agenda um, about, you know, how this movie was going to come out. And, um, of course, there's been some accusations of bias that, you know, it's one-sided and you, you were promoting this one um, angle. And, I mean, how do you respond to that? I mean, you <coughs> seem to have already kind of responded to that. But, um. you no, know, the, the great thing, and I, I love, you know, any 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 uh, debate is great. It should just encourage people to do more research. But when I hear that, what people don't understand is that we try to get people on the other side of the argument, like desperately tried, but nobody would do an interview. <laughs> That's, they would all yeah. freak out when we'd yeah. call them. And one guy in particular, I don't want to say his name in BC, but he was in charge. He was the head of the green team, which is specifically uh, a task force to bust uh, grow ops and cultivations in British Columbia. And we originally contacted this one neighborhood had Grow Watch, like Neighborhood Watch, but it was specifically to look for signs that we explained in the film to look right. for a Grow Watch. So we contacted the block representative and, he, and asked if he would do an interview, and he's like, oh, you should really talk to our superior if we're going to go on camera. So then we talked to the person that was in charge of that town. Then she didn't want to do it, and she's like, you really need to get in charge of the person that started this in the province, which ended up being a guy that you know, works for the task force for the RCMP. And we called him, and this is exactly how the conversation went with our producer, Stephen, who is the most mellow, even keel guy. Stephen's just like, hey, you know, glad you finally got back to me. And the guy's like, yeah, what is this, this, this pot thing you want to do? And he said, listen, we're just doing a, a documentary on the BC marijuana industry, and we just want to get your perspective, good or bad, and we want to know how you feel about this plant. And he goes, whoa, 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 whoa. He's like, I can already tell you're on the other side of the spectrum. 
I'm not doing an interview. You refer to it as a plant. Let's get this right. It's a drug. It's not a wow. plant. <laughs> so I'm going to tell the RCMP and everybody else to deny interviews with you. I'm going to put your name on all the public files so they know not to do interviews with you. And Stephen, so mellow and really great producer, is just like, wow. what you're saying is great. That's fantastic. Could you educate us on that? Like, that's the kind of view we want to hear. And he was like, nope, nope, I'm done. I'm reviewing you. You said your name is Stephen Green, and this is called The Union, The Business Behind Getting High. We will be watching for you. <laughs> wow, that's and, unbelievable. And, you know, it's <laughs> not, though. Film guys, it's this not. is our first documentary. We were just like, really? Like, you got, like, we're on a, we're on a list now yeah. because we wanted to do a film yeah. about yeah. it? <laughs> it's kind of flattering, though. They must have... <laughs> you know, I was always told, you know, and I grew up on the dark side of things with my... I owned a nightclub that I inherited from my father. I grew up around motorcycle clubs and saw the damage of alcohol and other kinds of drugs. People who keep secrets are unethical people, right? People that are not willing to be fully transparent. Sure. Yep. You know, it's something that we're really seeing in, North, in world culture right now. Absolutely. And that's why there's so many, there's Occupy Wall Street and stuff like that. People are fed up with the bullshit, yep. right? And that's kind of what we have. Like, we wanted to, we begged people. Please just come on, even videotape yourself as we're filming you, so that if you're worried about editing and stuff, you have your own version, right? Wow. We'll send you all the footage, just please do an interview. And they didn't want to do an interview. So there's only so much we can get on the other yeah. side if people don't want to do that, interviews that, that with us, right? so, We contacted uh, Partnership for Drug Free America, they said no way. We contacted a whole bunch of people, and that's why in the film, when you have Norm Stamper saying, he's like, I understand why police and stuff that are currently working won't say anything. Because they don't want to lose their jobs. Yep. Right? It's like if once they're retired, then they don't care anymore and they understand, you know, they have guilt about the mistakes they made and they come out and out themselves. Yep. Right? And say, listen, I have guilt for putting young college people in prison when they were smoking weed in their dorm rooms. You know, I feel We all know too that. intimately about that, unfortunately, oh, yeah. in this room, I think maybe. <laughs> I personally. It's, it's very interesting, too, that you talk about that. Uh, they, they don't want to be on camera anymore because in the old days, when this movement first started, we would do hearings at the state house and there would be 50 to 100 people screaming against marijuana legalization with one or two people speaking in support. And now it's just yeah. the opposite. We, we, we're, I'm having the same problem on this show. Nobody will come on for the other side. No one will, no one, they, they won't touch it because they know they can't win. And, and that's, that's how... They sure. won't even speak on it publicly. That that says it all. These guys are getting paid to fight to continue the drug war, and they won't even speak publicly to you, a, a movie producer, on it. I mean, that just says it all. Um, well, see, that's what that's what we're really excited about with the culture highs because that's something we really plan on getting is the other side for a lot of these arguments. And now we have a real budget where we can say to people if they deny us, and we just say, you know, that's we really hope you don't choose that way because. This time we have a budget to buy news footage of you, and because you're a political figure, that's fair use in the United States. So we can take that news footage and chop it any way we want, but we'd much rather sit down with you and really hear your perspective and even bring your own camera. Oh, yeah. Right? If you want to protect your arguments, we're yeah. fully open to that. Yeah. I encourage it. But if you don't do an interview with us, we're going to just go buy news footage from CNN or NBC mm -hmm. or any interviews you've done. That's very interesting. That that's that's how you play ball, I guess. In this, let me ask well, you about. You don't start. That's not that's not your starting point, yep. right? Because we don't want. You do, yeah. We're filmmakers first. We're not sure. activists. We're doing another film about hockey enforcers in the NHL. I'm doing a dramatic feature. I'm not an activist, right? I'm just. I call myself a factivist, right? I yes. dive into yeah. research. I You're telling the, the truth. I see it. I present it as I saw it. If you disagree, research it. Awesome. That's the best thing a okay. film can do, especially a documentary. If you don't believe what's in the union, Google fact check everything in there. You have a phone that can Google fact check everything. Please try to prove the stats wrong. That's great because then that gets you researching and educating yourself on what's really going on. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's how facts facts tend to uh, inspire when people are presented those kinds of facts. You know, they tend to inspire people to become activists or factivists. So, you know, yeah. we like to think of ourselves in similar lights. I mean, this is like a movie that I feel like, you know, you can show your parents, you can show your grandparents. Yeah. It's really accessible. You have some, I mean, really, and, and you have some so many excellent interviews. I mean, the ones that obviously did agree um, to be seen on camera. So um, what was, I, 
you know, what was the most interesting or one of the, one of the most notable interviews that you would like to you know share? I personally, I loved um, watching um, you go into the grow up, the you know the little the grow up in the guy's basement. That um, yeah. I just thought it was really interesting to see up close, like a, a real person, um, you know, that was willing to let you in. And um, so I don't know what was what was your more your most uh, illuminating or interesting interview, the most fun for the film. They, I, I'd say that I have several in different different reasons. I I mean, uh, obviously Joe Rogan was a big favorite when we first we interviewed him. We love Joe Rogan. Get, I, I didn't know him he was on a our show. <laughs> At that point, I just knew him from Fear Factor and UFC, and he was hilarious, right? Like, we had to cover our mics because he had us laughing. And, <laughs> and, why, why, <laughs> say that again. Why did, did you have to cover your really mic? Because he had you matter of fact way. Why, why, and, I couldn't hear uh, that. Well, I mean, Adam. Lester Grinspoon is like talking to this wise old grandfather, right? They're like, when he talks, I just don't even want to, I don't even want to blink. I just want to keep listening, right? Just, he, just talk some more, please, right? And, uh, and, you know, his story is very moving with what happened to his son, having leukemia at a young yes. age, and that's what started him off at getting into the researching marijuana because he saw his son smoking weed at 12 years old. Had, You know, it really helped with his chemo and everything else. And then, you know, he had an argument with Carl Sagan, as we know he mentions yeah. in the film, that Carl Sagan, one of the most, still to this day, some of the research he did for rocket science is, evolutionary and he smoked three to five joints every day at NASA all the time at NASA and Lester too. wanted to prove him wrong saying that like, he's like he's like oh that shit's gonna kill you like don't you read and I was like oh Lester you only live once can't worry about that stuff and Lester's like no 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 I'm a Harvard PhD I will show you and Lester dug into all the literary research that was done at all the universities around North America and it found out that it was not what the media was portraying. And he was like, wow, he's like, I feel like an absolute idiot. Here I am, you know, a renowned scholar and PhD from Harvard Medical School, and I'm educating people on the wrong facts. So that's when he wrote his book, Marijuana Reconsidered. And Harvard wanted to try to sue him and pull his license because he was the first Ivy League doctor to ever talk out against what was on the, the mainstream media. So he had to go to the Supreme Court, and they were challenging him, and it, it's, he has a fascinating, fascinating story. Yeah, and his interviews with, you know, over the course of the, the movie were really incredible. And you got you guys got to meet him, correct? Yeah. I. Oh, yeah, the several Lester still, he actually wrote us a letter to help with the culture high, saying that, you know, he's been a part of almost all of these documentaries, and that the, that the union is the gold standard as far as marijuana documentaries go in his <laughs> perspective and and uh and cannabis uh, is the gold uh, standard of medicine he said that <laughs> when he was there too that's funny hey i love when he uses that gold standard he calls his cannabis the gold standard of medicine Grinspoon does. Yeah. Jeff Morris, you have a question, don't you? For yeah, I actually, Adam? just had a comment. I wanted, to, I did want to mention on the air that um, that back in 2008, uh, Suffolk Normal was founded in in October of 2008, and the one of the actual main sole reasons that Suffolk Normal was founded was because of the union, the business behind getting high. We this movie kind of did a, a tour with like kind of a small like kind of like movie movie festivals, film festivals like all over the country. Um, and and Sean that is with us right now was actually was able to attend one of these screenings and um, I don't know if you want to mention just how powerful that screening was. Like it was just yeah, it was actually it was a small screening. I believe it was uh, Montpelier, Vermont, small little town, the capital of Vermont. It was a small screening. There were probably the room was packed, but it wasn't bigger than a forty-person room or something. And I was surprised to actually see a large a large percentage of an older crowd there that you wouldn't think to be attending something like this and at the end just absolute standing ovation like everybody was completely blown away and you could tell that it was a demographic of people who really hadn't gotten any of those facts like you were mentioning a lot of activists like a lot of the same facts get passed around but for people that hadn't heard these it's mm -hmm. groundbreaking so yeah it really is and, and i just wanted to you know i wanted to say adam like thank i can't say thank you so much again because it just you know you did create suffolk normal like your movie is is what made this organization blow up to a thousand student member organization that's moving the moving the movement forward in Massachusetts. It's just it's incredible. It really yeah, let's hear it for that. Uh, Very nice. Yeah, this is the biggest uh, that's amazing. I, you know, Jeff, I tell that story all the time because that's one of those things like as an independent filmmaker, you know, when you're struggling financially and there's there's moments when you're like, Oh, I wanna quit and I tell that story to people. I'm like, that's why I can't quit. Like I remember when you told me that story in Suffolk when I came out there and you 
I was like, I asked you what got you so active in starting Nolan. You're like, your movie. And I'm like, no, you don't got to say that because I'm here, man. <laughs> and, like, oh, no. and you broke it down. And I knew your story was the, totally truthful because Vermont, we did 33 international film festivals. And Vermont was the sixth festival that we'd done. It was very early when we were just getting in and none of the big festivals would take us. And that festival took us. And I was like, wow, you guys really did go to one of the very first screenings. Wow! Like and 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 saw it, and it you see the impact that this movie's had, and it's amazing. It, it really is very inspiring and moving for us as filmmakers because we never thought it would become that. Like, you know, where now you know the union has now been purchased by over twenty two colleges and universities, and actually taught as part of their educational curriculum. Yep. Yep. You know, like that's when we when we when the you know Uni University of Ottawa and University of San Francisco and these places were contacting us. I'm like, really? You're going to show this in law and sociology class? And they're like, yep. Yeah. I was like, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, that's it. You, so, like, you did it. You and know, I, like I can't tell you how many high schools or colleges I get text messages and messages from all over, all over North America. Like, yeah, my high school teacher brought it in and we watch it. I'm like, really? You know, the swears in it? They're like, yeah, they <laughs> wanted us to do it, um, you know, argumentative essay afterwards. And that's pretty great. It, uh, it, that's phenomenal. It continues to seem to keep growing. What about this new movie? What is yeah. going to be in the culture high? What, what, uh, what can we expect? Well, I can't wait because at the end of the, the end of the union really builds. You you really get into Tommy Chong, Mark Emery, Joe Rogan. You can really see where you're going with this. And I want to know where you are going with the culture high. Okay, well I can't give away too many secrets, but I'll tell you the first one's all about the business, and the second one is all about the culture. You know what is it about human culture that makes us pick this your team or my team mentality, right? And it's happened in many different things other than marijuana prohibition. It's just, you know it's race separation and. Um, interracial marriages and women having their right in the workplace, you know, where a lot of times people get so caught up in their moralistic arguments versus, you know, really doing the research and fact-checking and, and you know, seeing what would really be best for a nation rather than saying, well, here's why I grew up in this circle around my team and my moral views and I don't like change. So I'm going to argue these without doing any research or, and, you know, wars and things have come across from this and we've, We've really reached out to some very, very like brilliant think thinkers of our time, uh, like Howard Bloom, that wrote like the Lucifer Principle and stuff like that. That talks about what it is in our in our nature to be destructive, even when we're trying to do what's best for us. It's going to go really deep in a way that's different, but it's all coming back to cannabis prohibition and how things could have been different. And you're going to see some familiar faces. You know, we have uh, Boy Joe Rogan's back. Lester is ecstatic to be back and we're happy we're getting him on camera because um, he's not telling too many people but he does have cancer and he's going through chemo right now and he is mm. 87 years old yeah wow so wow. this could possibly be the last interview with um, you know renowned scholar Lester Grinspoon and, wow. and because the union you know we are nobody's doing the union not that we're anybody's now but at least we have a calling card now that people can say wow you guys did something that was professional and respectful we don't mind getting on camera with that. So, I mean, we're reaching out to big people like Sir Richard Branson and, wow. you know, Congressman Ron Paul. Yeah. A lot of different people. And also people on the other side of the spectrum that, you know, hopefully will come in. So, we didn't want to do another pot doc, but we just think there's some really great information that's come out globally lately. And, uh, and Brett has found a new creative way to be very, very different. But at the same time, not too confusing that the average person steps in there and can't just learn something that's great i love how you're doing it I, we can't wait to see it do you have any idea when this might be released i know it sounds like you're well, still working on some of it well we've had we've had some issues getting the financing together because of the subject matter of course but we're hoping to get cameras fully rolling by may um like may or june and one of the unique things we're going to do with this is we have a really really unique opportunity to get this in like two to three hundred theaters yeah. Right, which is for documentaries is next to impossible nowadays. Yeah. But there's some new companies coming out and we're gonna use Kickstarter for our theatrical push. Oh, right yeah. where the more people we can get to pre buy the film through Kickstarter, the wider the release we can get yep. in the theatrical run, both in Canada, the United States, UK and Australia. So can we get so, the link to that so that people can uh people can support that, um, that listen to our show? 
Oh, yeah. What's yeah, no, it's not. Once the video's done, trust me, I'll be banging on oh, all of you. Okay, okay. <laughs> we'll be all over that. We're, we're a little too excited over here. <laughs> we're we're ready to gun. do it now. <laughs> no, that, and that's awesome. And that's what I, you know, that's when me and the director were sitting down. We're like, you know what's very cool is like, I, I can't. Com- I can't compliment enough how cool the support has been for the film with through our Facebook site and when they show up to screenings and wanting to host screenings. I, I just had a man, I had to even look it up on Google Maps. I had a, a screening uh, <coughs> somewhere in Eastern Europe that used to be a province of Russia asked me if they could do a screening. And I was like, man, are you guys even interested in this? Study? I really covered North America. And they're like, no way. We want to show it. Estonia. So it's amazing the support and we're really excited with what we have for the culture high. We're literally people complained that this never gets the kind of airtime that is needed. Well now that literally is gonna be put into the hands of the viewer yeah. for the first time. So it's gonna be kind of a put up or shut up guys. If you guys really wanna see this hit the big screen, all you have to do is pre buy a copy. Yeah, I think that makes a lot pre-sell, of sense. If we pre sell yeah. five thousand copies It'll be in over 175 theaters wow. in North America and several in, and, and like 20 to 30 in, in Australia and 20 to 30 in the UK. We'll be playing in Boston, I guarantee you that. And uh, <laughs> that, that's good. Well, yeah, that, that is the I, way to I do it, too. I would love to come out there and get Lester for one of the premieres, for sure. Oh, we, we, we would hope to see that. That would that. be incredible, we a, and we wish him absolutely yeah. the best. Wish Lester the best of, best of his time. Um, well, th- well, thank you so much for spending time with us today. Really yeah, good. Well, Mom, thank you fantastic. very much for having me on. I we're, didn't know you had my boys in the audience there. Too. Absolutely. Yeah, a little surprise you got a big it. fan club they, over here. These guys, <laughs> they, they wanted to be here. They made sure that they were here for this. Wanted to say hello for sure. Well, oh, man, that's very cool, man. And honestly, your story is one of the most moving stories, man. That's very cool what you guys did at Suffolk. And I'm not lying about the screening, man. Yours was, uh, you know, I have like two or three of my top three, like, inspirational, and like, moving screenings. And... That's number one. Number two is another one I did in Modesto, and there's a lot of cancer patients in the audience that were calling us heroes, and I, I, I argued to death that I wasn't, but in their eyes they said, no, your film is what changed our parents' perspectives into allowing us to use cannabis for our treatment, and it is working fantastic. To us, you are. And I was like, well, I'm still have troubles with that word, but thank you very much. I appreciate <laughs> it. That's what, yeah. yeah thank, thank you. you. Thank, you, man. thank you. Thank you, Adam. Yeah, I think hero is a good word for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll, you'll uh, get used to it eventually. I like, I like creative hustler. That's better. <laughs> creative hustler. <laughs> that works, well, you're, too. Well, you're hustling a whole lot of creative knowledge, and yeah. we're really happy that you're doing it. Um, I, I want to, do you have, do you have, um, are you going to be, you know, bringing in some of the more recent, uh, you know, uh, pr- projects such as Prop 19 obviously happened. I mean, this the union was written in 2007, and I was just wondering if the new, if the culture high is going to include any of that, the more recent uh, modern day legalization efforts. Do you know? Absolutely. Oh, and okay. And talk really about the, the, see, the interesting thing is that, you know, we've, we've gotten some respect even in the political world, and there's some big movements going on in Canada right now that, you know, there's right now, like, it's federally you can get a federal medical license here in Canada to grow, right? So there's no worry of it being state or province approved and then the feds coming in. From (laughs) Ottawa, our federal government will grant you a federal license to grow cannabis for patient use. 100% recognized in the medical community. And right now with the Canadian, there's four or five cannabis-based medicines that are looking to launch. They're in phase three clinical trials in Canada and also some coming to the United States. GW has the Kivix going to be launching in the United States in 2012, which is fascinating considering it's a Schedule One narcotic. But in Canada, what they're allowing to do right now is the RX companies have said, we don't want to spend the time and research and getting the clientele that's needed. So why don't we let these people apply for their licenses, build a clientele, then we'll come in and either buy them out or push them out. Hmm. So... They are using the federal government to allow regular people without criminal licenses to get federally approved licenses to grow. I was just in a huge operation the other day of 150 lights wow. that's producing like 5 to $7 million a year. 100% legal, totally recognized by the cops. The sheriff was actually in there when we were there checking out how clean and fantastic the facility is. Hmm. And once they build up enough, they really think once the Harper government's out and things are moving, 
that by like 2015, 2016, the full push will be in and they will, pharmaceutical yeah. companies will be driving. So going back to what we saw in the union is that ultimately business is what drives decisions, right, in a lot of policies that are made. Mm-hmm. Right. Unfortunately, it's not what's best for the people. It's what's best for the people paying these guys to make decisions for us. Right, but those things seem to be coming more and more in step as, uh, you know, the profits that are, you know, th- these are now legitimate pro- profits. That's a huge deal. When do you think we're going to get it in the United States? When do you think we can say that th- we can have The United States is just such a different monster. I don't know. I thought you guys were way ahead of us when we did the union, oh. <laughs> but it just seems like it's going way backwards there. It gets- Doesn't it? <laughs> That's what, sorry, like, it just seems like the state seems to get too caught up in, like, who's right instead of worrying about what's right for everybody else. It's, well, that's like, what you're talking about. I moved there as a Canadian, having an outside perspective, and, and maybe that helped with the union, too, because we came from where we're very close and very similar, but there's differences in things. Like, when I first moved to Houston, I remember I was working my first job down doing cathodic protection surveys on gas and oil pipelines, and my boss, like, on the second day, wanted to know, he's like, well, where are you, a Republican or Democrat? And I was yeah. like... Man, I don't know. I'm 19. I don't really follow. That. <laughs> Good and, answer. And he, and he was like, he's like, oh, that's a liberal answer. You're a liberal. And I was like, okay, man. <laughs> if you want to put a label on it, I'm from Canada. Like politics are about as popular as a chess club up there. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know where I am. I guess I'm a liberal then. And he had to know. Like he had to clarify that. My boss, like, basically was like, but like, what is your? I have to know if I'm working with you. That's crazy. Well, we're, we're, we're glad like, you. Get- I'm doing. Yeah. And like, is there any wrong with my performance? I'm like, yeah. no. You're one of the hardest workers here. Then fine. What does it matter? Yeah, I'm a conservative. Like, like just like you. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. But there seems to be that that push in the U.S. that it you know, people have to know where you sit. Yeah, like they do. where are you? And and you have to what, put what you in you that do? bucket. You know, in that 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 specific peg. It's like. Yeah. yeah, well, it looks like you're going to be exploring that in the culture high as well, so we're looking forward to seeing Where, where can we find, I, I know you have a couple of websites, where can we find more information about all your movies? You have other movies you mentioned, uh, the one about the hockey, the NHL hockey fight fighters, yeah, I guess. Enforcers, enforcers, yeah, enforcers. And then you have um, the... You can, the, the best way to get a hold of me is through Facebook, if you just get my name, Adam Scorgi, I'm on there. Uh, so just my website I just got launched, which is Scorgi Productions. Dot com, and which is spelled score is like a goal, and then a G, and then productions. And then always go to the Union Facebook site, too. I think it's got like 35,000 followers now. If you want to stay up to date with what's going on with the culture high and the Union is the best way to stay up to date there. And I'm and I'm on Twitter and stuff, too, so I'm, I'm pretty easy to reach out, as Jeff knows. I mean, he just reached out to me and got a hold of me. I'm, I'm, I, resp- I try to respond to everybody. It does get tough sometimes. I got kids and... You know, sometimes I get like 60 emails and I go, oh, I have to try to get back on this. I don't have secretaries or anybody to help me with that, so it's just me. But you are there and you do answer and you answered us and we want to thank you so much for your time today, Adam. Yes, no, thank you. No, thank you very much for having me on, guys. I really appreciate it. And we look forward to seeing your new movie. We can't wait. We'll be all behind it. You let us know when uh, you're ready and we will promote the heck out of it. Thanks so very much, guys. Really and we'll do some screenings. Thanks for having me on again. Awesome. N- nice talking to you, Adam. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, guys. All right, you're listening to Two Hotheads on Cannabis on unregularradio.com. The phone number is 617-606-4122. It's almost 5 o'clock. There is a magic moment here now on the show. <laughs> <laughs> it's become that way. <laughs> so give us a call and uh, tell us how we're doing today. If, you like, if you're listening and you like what you hear or you don't like what you hear. Yeah, thank you so much to you guys. Suffolk Normal, you guys represented. I'm so glad you had that story to share with Adam and, to, of course, to Adam Scorgy for coming on the show. This was a great... Um, interview, a great opportunity to, to talk about, yeah, you know, yeah. some pretty inspirational yeah. Thank folks. you, Jeff Morris and Sean McSoley for being here for Suffolk yes. Normal. Thank, thank you, Dave. Thank, thank you. Always always a pleasure to come on <laughs> Two Hot Heads. <laughs> always good. And, and getting hotter by and the And Simpson <laughs> over there. Simpson just playing the watchdog. What's going on, Simpson? Nothing. <laughs> I'm just hanging out. <laughs> Is there going to be anything to talk about after we come back? Yeah, you can talk about my show. You, well, what, give us some. Why will people want to come back and hear about your show in, mm-hmm. in five seconds? One Which word. Chains, uh, mouth beating, spanking, sexy. That's stuff. more than one word. <laughs> Good On Lord. On regularradio.com, 617 <laughs> We also have some news we're going to be talking about and stuff from our Facebook wall. So uh, please stay tuned. Thanks to all our fabulous guests. And up next.
David Peel, three sixties. You know what it is. I, I like marijuana. Let's you like do marijuana? It. Let's do it. On regularradio.com, Boston's best online radio. From the Unregular Radio Studios in downtown Boston, here's Mike Can and Heather Mack. Hello. <laughs> we're, we're back. Two hotheads on cannabis on regularradio.com. Uh, we just had Adam Square G here on the show. Um, had a fantastic time speaking with him about his movie, The Union, his upcoming movie, Culture High. And uh, now we're gonna we're gonna chat about some upcoming events and some some news that is worth noting via our Facebook page and other sources like uh, Mr. Can's website. Do you ever promote your website on the show? Uh, my Mike? can.net. Yeah, that there one. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's probably do that more often. It's something <laughs> else we have to promote right now. Oh yeah. A big huge event related to the radio station on regularradio.com. It's the uh, finals for the Rumpetition. It's a big contest that yes, the station Yes, we played does. last year. That was an awesome, awesome event. McGann's tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, it's actually starting, I think, right about now, about 5 o'clock. A whole lot of bands. I know Amber Lads in the finals. Is Hooker thing. Clap still performing? Are they, I'm not are sure. they still in the running? We should take a look and see if we can look too. that up on the internet, on the, on the Unregular Radio website. Yep. But if you want to find more information, definitely look at the station's website. They're uh, keeping it updated throughout, which I really like now. Casey doing good work. Yeah, thanks, Casey. And uh, I love the station. This is a big event that they do every year for the local music, so check it out. And uh, other events we have upcoming, too, don't we? Yes, we do. We wanted to talk about a Suffolk event, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Jack Cole's coming in. Yeah, um, yeah, actually, I thought it was a good time to bring up um, this uh, this upcoming week. It's going to be uh, Tuesday, February 28th at uh, 6 p.m. on uh, on the Suffolk, uh, Suffolk University campus. It's, it's going to be at uh, 41 Temple Street in the uh, Frank J. Donahue building. We are proud to present uh, Jack Cole, the uh, one of the founding members of Law Enforcement Against Prohibition, is going to come speak for a couple hours. It's, uh, it's from 6 to 8 p.m., and uh, we're really excited to have him out there because I, I, I feel that... I feel that a large portion of the crowd at Suffolk that's going to be hearing this are people who are not necessarily, uh, you know, uh, used used to hearing these facts. Nobody, nobody, nobody in this. Uh, a lot of the a lot of the people here that are going to be coming from the classes are just completely not exposed, and it's very exciting to be able to expose Absolutely. them to it. Absolutely, it's like uh, Adam said, you know, earlier. We are, I know Jack Cole's story. I know all about Jack Cole. I've heard the story. But when you hear it for the first time, even an activist like me who's been exposed, when I heard that story for the first time of who Jack Cole was, what he did for work for over 20 years, what he saw, the results of it, it, it's just shocking. And uh, for someone that has any type of interest in activism or marijuana reform, or you're not even sure, you just want to see something interesting, find out something new, this is the perfect type of event for that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And it was also really exciting, too, to see... For for you know see see really good support coming from the university itself because um right in the uh, PAD department for uh, there's a social social change class. What's and, a PAD? What is that? Um, I'm actually not not sure. Political administration, I believe, is okay. what it may stand for. Okay. But um, it's so uh, it's, it's a, a politics so, division. Yeah, and it's a, there's a, there's a class specifically social change, and um, in that class, um, you know, you just discuss a lot of social movements going on in the country, and this came up in class, and actually, it was I was really excited to see the interest of the professors, and they were actually very very excited to bring bring a lot of students here and I got kind of got put on the spot right um, right in front of uh, the department was asked to talk about it and got up in front of a few classes just kind of on the spot and got everybody really excited about it you know it was just telling it was a lot of people who hadn't heard this stuff before and was just just talking about you know basically to loosely quote Jack Cole about how you know you know 30 years ago when they're starting the war on drugs a 10 gram cocaine seizure and a 10 gram heroin seizure were large seizures and now it's up to 10 10 tons you know yeah so it's really Really grown, and he he brings up the fact that you know you but you spend more money, you bust more people, and yet the you know the drugs get, get bigger. Yeah, yeah, the bus get bigger, and not only do drugs get cheaper, they get more potent and also more available to an un, to an unregulated market like the kids. You know, it's more available for kids to get in schools than than ever before. So. That's awesome. You think uh, that helped with your professors at Suffolk when you were speaking out about the event you're working on? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. They they were really happy to see the involvement. You know, it's they they made it they made it clear that they weren't in support of it, but that it would be a good idea to bring up and talk about and have an open forum and an open discussion. So I'm really hoping a lot comes of it. You know, I'm hoping that it really. (laughs) 
picks up momentum and becomes a hot topic, especially just on the university campus. Yeah, that's that's very exciting. And uh, we had uh, some other news too. We wanted to yeah, touch well, base on, and we have a we, we do. Well, we do our Facebook. Uh, uh, is anyone posting about our show today? We haven't had any. Um, phone yeah, calls, we did. We had a, we had a few posts. A few people asked to join the show over the course of the show. So that's that great. Was exciting. Um, Nikki Smokes, our girl Nikki Smokes, couldn't be in the uh, studio today, but from Free Mass Media, she's posted. Um, what did she? She, she posted a few. Um, she she wrote Nikki Smokes epic. Epic evening planned tonight. Shaleen's birthday and SSDP fundraiser. Dave Tree's fundraiser at Sweet Tree Inc. in Austin, Mass. Happy birthday, Shaleen. Bringing some of Dave Tree's Mass Can Normal shirts to give away and shooting some videos. Add freemassmedia.com on Facebook for more local indie news and updates. And keep listening to Two Hot Heads on Cannabis, Mike Cannon, and Heather Mack. Oh, that's cool. Keep it rocking. So yeah. thank you, Nikki, for Nikki uh, sticking with shouting us. Shouting out. What we're doing today. <laughs> um, and there's also. Uh, Oh, something else I wanted to get to too. Well, yeah, there's um, I I was just gonna say because yeah, our ahead. our Facebook page has been growing, 135 new members this week, which is great, and um, so people have been posting all sorts of links, and this is how I find out about a lot of my pot news is like is like the crib notes is our Facebook page. So our one community. Thing, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and I <laughs> definitely want to thank out some people too, because I've been noticing some people have been inviting their friends to join, like um, uh, Jerry. Well. Uh, Oh, why can't I? Well, I'm losing my brain, train of thought. Jerry, you know from Julia's page? Yeah, Jerry's a good Haskins? friend. Haskins? Jerry Haskins. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Newman. Yes. Jerry Haskins invited a bunch of people, which I really appreciate. And he's not the only one. We should we should go through every week and thank anyone that invites anyone to this page. And I think that's gonna <laughs> got to be an upcoming contest. That's like, oh, so that's a good idea. you can invite the most people for Vaporize or something like that. That so, would be awesome. We're yeah. working on that. And maybe if or pe- maybe or maybe some gift cards to uh, to JP Licks because that was one of the <laughs> yeah. that was one of the new stories. Maybe we'll I just to randomly mention. do it too. When we get something, <laughs> we'll just randomly pick someone who just invited a bunch of friends because <laughs> I want to randomly support that. You Reward. Know? Those thank you, Jerry Haskins. Us. I'm randomly saying thank you to him because I know he just invited. It's really some random. Yeah. Um, this is also kind of random, which is the JP Licks. JP Licks. Yeah, uh, <laughs> they're about to start selling them. hemp-based ice cream. Yeah. You from, know them, since yeah, I know JP. They're Lakes. delicious. I had a milkshake the other day. All right, so what are they doing? Have well, them. you're about to have a hemp milkshake down the road. Down the road. I mean, this is like yeah. at JP Licks. Yeah, yeah. JP Licks. That's is like a family yeah. place. Is yeah. going to start selling hemp based ice cream, and that's based out of Jamaica Plain. Does it taste I'll like weed? And, uh, what does it taste like? No, it says um, it's yeah, yeah the. A local group of ice cream cafes is getting ready to introduce a new line of flavors that will include an ingredient they may raise some eyebrows. According to the Somerville blog of Wicked Local, J.P. Licks is going to be rolling out a line of hemp-based ice cream that will be dairy-free, with the ice cream being introduced Ooh, in, I like in that. April. Oh, well, they tie it in with 420. That would oh, be genius. Oh, I know. I thought they did. We should have them at the, you know, at, at some events and stuff. This yeah. is great. The tie-ins are endless. And that's that's... I mean, you know, I, li- I like that too. Dairy remember free. when uh, George Bush tried to ban uh, hemp wa- hemp seed waffles from Whole Foods? <laughs> did he really? Yes, he did. <laughs> so reminds me that. of that. I'm waiting for some some local outrage to come out. It'd be hilarious. But um, I thought that that was great. Um, we also we, there was another am- awesome article that somebody posted um, that was from the Huffington Post in the United Kingdom. Um, Dr. Peter Frenzy, who wrote, "What will defeat the war on drugs? Love, affection." and familiarity and it kind of talks about how recently in our culture with stuff like intervention and um, things on TV that have been documenting like the human side of drugs and drug addiction and drug use and um, it's it's becoming um, you know it's convincing people to start uh, rethinking their positions on drugs and whether or not you know uh, prohibiting you know keeping prohibition going is is actually helping anyone and it was I don't know it was a really nice little article you should check it out it's also posted on uh a Facebook, on our group. Facebook group. Um, I'm trying to, but uh, you also had a great little uh, article that you posted. Not so, not so great for us in the movement, but um, informative about uh, Obama's recent uh, just released his uh, budget for this year for drug um, the drugs enforcement. The drugs. Yeah, the war on drugs. Tell us about that a little bit. Uh, nothing changes, you know. Same old story. It's uh, people thought that this uh, president. And his administration would go with us a little more, and in fact, it's showing no. Just like Clinton, it's uh, you know Clinton all of a sudden was cool on weed as soon as he was out of office. Did you notice that? I mean, as soon as he got out of office, turned to an asshole. 
No, well, when they turn into an asshole when they're in office, and when they're, they're out, they're cool again, right? <laughs> but he wasn't. He, or beforehand, he, no, they're a- cool Afterwards, too. he probably ain't cool again because his wife's in the office. You yeah, know what I mean? she's a bitch. But when... when <laughs> what are we, what are we just... <laughs> Well, some seriously yeah. baseless Simpson, that was crazy. right now. Well, Simpson, we need a sound bite of that. Yeah. Just, what? Rick and what? Yeah, what did you just Rewind. say about... Yeah. I said she's a bitch. Oh. She's mean. Oh, yeah. well, she's very blow. mean. Blow. Well, what? that's what she is. Oh, you, Simpson, you might get suspended for this one. Oh, I, want, oh. I think I'm going to counter if you, this. If you get the woman, if you get... Uh, Calm a leader and Heather against you. You're well, a big. You that's a power oh. trio. Hey, oh, okay. Well, I mean, if you want to be I'm, mean I'm, and nasty, I'm a woman and so, well, a woman. you know, wait a minute, men can be an asshole. Oh so uh, what's the difference? This is going down. A <laughs> very the president's difficult the president's. Path. Wait a minute, the president's a jerk. So what's the president? He's an asshole. Oh. <laughs> yeah, this is a big asshole. Yeah, that's not how I speak. Let's alienate yeah. everybody. Well, right I'm right. trying to work with the president. <laughs> well, I mean, but hey, President what? Obama. Yeah. <laughs> I could sing Al Green with you. I can. Yeah. I can have beer with you. I could smoke a joint with you. You I'm could all sing about Sweet Home president. Chicago. You yeah. have but he's got to smoke. He's got to. He's got to lay off on us. You got to admit. Weed. Let's stay together. He killed that. He yeah. killed that. If he was auditioning on The Voice, they'd all turn around. <laughs> well, I don't think he was auditioning. I think he had a lot of practice for that. Yeah. That. Oh, come that on. I think he was. He was Broadway trained. Probably. What? I heard he spent a lot of time on that. We're just starting new that, conspiracy theories. No, no, no. I'm I heard he brought in a voice coach. Uh, probably. Oh, yeah. He, he, seemed <laughs> kind of, he seemed kind of square to me. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Well, that, I don't know. That that kind of killed it, though. Oh, um, probably. I'm just yeah. saying. But listen, anytime, I'm, I'm going to tell the truth. Simpson. If somebody's mean and they moving in the wrong direction and they really down on pot, I'm not down with them. Period. We, we can all agree right. on I that. Could we can, we can I like that, that Simpson. You know. Yeah. We're, we're all, you know what? Is that why turns. we're together, Simpson? Yeah. Well, see, we, we got all that in common. Let's stay we have together. A, have commonality. Yeah. Use common sense <laughs> and have a great wisdom. Yeah. That's why people are going to come and listen to my show, too. <laughs> well, yeah. oh, so we, oh, we, yeah, gotta, we do have to go. Show. So before we go, let's show? hear about Simpson's big show. What's what's going on with this? Well, it's going to be called The Dungeon New England kink. The dungeon? Oh, yeah. Are you a devil worshiper, Simpson? Uh-uh. uh, uh I'm right. a witch, though. Oh, you're I'm a, a witch. Wiccan. All right. You're a yeah. wicked. Yeah. I, I've been that for a while. I'm supposed to run away. I'm with God. Anyway, what, what? I really like is uh, my show is going to be about alternative lifestyle uh, we, from the we British community. Those. And we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to have a lot of uh, understanding, educational facts going to be given out. We're going to find out why people do these things. Uh, they can come up here and have all the fun they want. There's no limit to uh, no censorship, no nothing. So, if, you know, they want to enjoy themselves. People want to listen in and they want to have a good time and they want to find out about another facet of life or find out more about who they are. Tune in to my show and making, you'll find out. You're making you'll a lot of promises out. there. That's serious. I think I'm going to be calling What does show our to show do? <laughs> I might call in to talk about weed. This I is, might call in to try we, to sidetrack it. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be like, you're talking about sex. I want to talk about the church. Not only are they going to be talking about sex, they're going to go as far as sexual as they can with any desire. I'm going to talk about to. Uh, Roman Catholic. Like this. <laughs> yeah. The Bi- Some people have a Roman read, Catholic I'm going to read passages from the Bible. I mean, you know. Just tie me up and spank me for a while. I might let you do what you want to do. That's oh, gonna be you that want, you, want, you want me to spank you? No, not me spank you, but the person, that's what they're going to tell you. <laughs> See, they're not going to tell me that because guess what? I'm the host of this show. Right. So I just have to, you know, put everything together. In-house live paddlings. Mm-hmm. And my co-host, <laughs> my co-host is uh, very good at this. Uh, Who's she, that? Her name is Lilith. And uh, uh-huh. on the show, I'll be known as Sir Jacko. Sir Jacko. Sir Jacko. <laughs> yeah. That sounds pretty good. I sounds love pretty it. Good. I love it. Simpson. I love it. All right. So it's you two minutes. It, it, it's going to be uh, ten thirty to eleven thirty every th- uh, Thursday, starting March fifteenth. <laughs> All right. We're going to have some great. <laughs> we'll, we'll be listening. We yeah. sure will. We and now sure uh, you'll be on on regularradio.com. <laughs> yeah. That's true. But will you still come to our show? Yeah, I'll still be on this show, but I'll be having fun on my show. You'll be having more fun <laughs> on your show. I'll be having so much in uh, which, show, which show are you going to like better? Plenty of fun to go uh, I think I'm going to like both shows, one better. I don't you know. You sound like a politician right the now, Simpson. diplomat. <laughs> well, you, you won't get there until it gets well, there. Well, I tell you this. Everybody still can smoke pot on my show. Oh, oh. no blow. 
Hello. Wait, wait. What do you, have you been, has everyone been spoken fought today? Yeah, uh, we broke the rules. Well, I, I'm not going to say. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can't, I can't uh, incriminate myself, so I'm going to be cool on that one. <laughs> but I will say this. Uh, I had a good time on this show today. Yeah, we yeah. sure yeah. did. This Let's hear it for the show today. Let's hear it for Simpson, too. Wrapping it up. That's a good Stop wrap up. So, uh, yeah, uh, for Dave Tree and his event tonight, make yeah. sure you go to that or to Shalene. Drug of course, is having her whole yeah, event. Shaleen. It's also amazing. SSDP Diversity Fundraiser on Facebook. Yeah. All of it is posted Look on our up. Facebook page. Two yeah. hotheads on cannabis. Tell your friends. We're starting a we're starting an army here. We're making it happen. Um, and uh, I don't know. I wanted I wanted to end. I I found a nice little quote to end on. That was uh, unless you have. No, I mean, I just want to, uh, <laughs> the only thing I want to say, thank you, Newman, too. And, uh, Absolutely. We thank everyone. Thanks for our listeners. Thanks for our supporters. People posting to our Facebook page and uh, sending we messages. We just have so much fun on the show. We get to talk to so many amazing people. I feel very incredibly lucky. Yeah, to me be too. Here. We, what, I want to end, end on a unifying note. Let's uh, hear it. I, I had a, you <laughs> this brought is from, something. This awesome. is from the article that, that I was mentioning. Dr. Peter Frenzy, What Will Defeat the War on Drugs? Love, Affection, and Familiarity. Also posted on our Facebook page. Um, no matter how corny it may sound, love really is the answer. So as that old song says, put a little love in your heart. We can really make the world a better place. And I call on each and every one of you to look honestly within yourself. Forget what you've been taught. Along the many baseless fears, along with the many baseless fears that have been rammed into your soul, and just ask yourself if you really desire the murder and degradation of others. If not, you will side with humanity and against the war on drugs. That's why we do what we do. Yeah. And we're going to yeah. end also on a high note with uh, Al Green. Let's stay together. <laughs> Courtesy of Newman right here. We'll all be singing along. Thank you so much for listening once again next to Hot Heads on Cannabis. Who do we have next week? Who do we have next week? I know. Isn't the mass marijuana legalization? Is Dick Evans, maybe? I Th think that's it. That's going to be great. I, I love Dick so. Evans. If it's not Dick Evans, yeah. No, I mean, well, we'll look at this. Uh, he's schedule. nobody. <laughs> yeah. I'm Don't bring sure. it up if you can't back no, it up. No, it's, it's either Dick <laughs> Evans or Slightly Stupid. Oh. It's, those are our next two shows, and I think it's Dick Evans and Slightly Stupid. I need to look at the calendar, but yeah, yeah. Keep, awesome. keep listening yeah, every we'll, Saturday. We'll keep, yeah. And there's more stuff that happens. We don't always <laughs> announce every guest. You never know who's going to show up. We're working it's on things. It's a secret even to us, yeah. apparently. New, so. new, new, <laughs> some new deals going to be happening with the show, true. too. Doing so. big things, as usual. Two hotheads on cannabis, unregularradio.com. Thanks again. We'll see you next week. Let's You're stay together. To unregularradio.com, Boston's best online radio.